All right, Utah State fans, Matthew Glade back. We are to number three in the countdown. And for number three, going back to offense, this time we're going to the other playmaker, Kerwin Williams. He had a pair of 86-yard plays. One a screen pass, one a touchdown run. Both make the list here at number three. The first one, the 86-yard screen pass against La Tech. The reason I put this play on the list is because it set the tone for that important game against Louisiana Tech. It kick-started that offense, and they were able to score enough points to force the overtime and eventually get the win. The next play I pick is the 86-yard run against San Jose State. That was an incredible game for Kerwin Williams. He had 100, over 170 yards rushing and three touchdowns in that game. We didn't know it at the time where San Jose State would end up, but they ended up being a top 25 team in the country, and we saw what they did to BYU. They were able to beat BYU at the end of the season. That's why I put these two plays in here. With me again, Jeremiah Jensen. What is your reaction to these two plays? What are your thoughts about Kerwin Williams and the season he had? Kerwin Williams was an unbelievable. I mean, we, he had to sit behind Robert Turbin and Michael Smith. That's tough to do. He had to wait his turn. Then he had to follow their act as well. Exactly. So he had that double-edged sword right there, right? Where he, it, it, he exceeded expectations. I voted before the season that he would be the preseason whack player of the year offensively because I, I knew what he was capable of and I seen what he was capable of and he, he was right there in the mix with Chucky and, and the quarterback from La Tech he had that good of a year that screen pass worked so many times throughout the season it was so difficult for defenses to, to defend because they ran it so well mm -hmm. they execute that screen pass so well and I don't know exactly all the details that why that's the case but it was so effective again and again and again. And that run after the catch really set the tone for the game like you mentioned and got them ahead in that game. And the rest of the time, La Tech was trying to catch up in the most important game of the season for Utah State. Now the other run against San Jose State, that showed his explosiveness. Once he hits the hole, he's got such great speed and strength. He just breaks right through, takes off. No one's going to catch him once he breaks gets in the open field. He did it so many times this year. Such a great playmaker, a special senior season for Kerwin Williams. And when you watch those two plays, like you mentioned, they run that screen so well. And that, and that run, you really saw how good this offensive line was for Utah State as well. An underrated part. It's something that just that never gets mentioned for Utah State. We never, we never talk about how good that offensive line was, you know, led, right. by, led by Tyler Larson. But... If you watch these plays, you see how well they fire off their blocks. They get down the field. They engage, and they, and they keep defenders away from the runners. They create huge holes for Kerwin, for Joe Hill, for Chucky to get through and make these big plays and allow Kerwin to get down the field and make defenders miss so that he can make these big plays. We talk about Chucky e. Keaton. We talk about Kerwin Williams. We talk about Will Davis on defense and Bojay Filimoyatu. The difference, the real reason why Utah State football has taken the next step and is a 10-win program now is the offensive line. They are so much better on the line of scrimmage than they ever have been. Tyler Larson is going to play in the NFL. Mm -hmm. You're right. That has been the difference in this program is the better play on the offensive line and the defensive line as well. Thank you, Jeremiah, for your time. Tune in tomorrow for number two on the list.